Hi, I am Kiara and I'm with the Chef's Connection and today we are at the showroom and bakery of this fantastic, talented chef. Ron Ben Israel, Ron baker. Ben Israel, baker. <laughs> um, we got an amazing tour, gorgeous, gorgeous space. But now I want to know a little more about you, the person, the man behind the cakes. So, me and the cakes are the same. You are the same, you and the cakes are one. I exist for cakes. Well, I love that. That's Oh, that sounds so good. Even with a heavy <laughs> accent, I exist for, for cakes. I know, uh, that, just always say that yeah. when you start an interview. Um, you have a pretty eclectic background. I mean, it wasn't always cakes. Right. You were a dancer. Right. You were in the army. Yes. You had, I'm sure, many other passions as well. Yeah. So does that all sort of feed into this ultimate? It's interesting. I didn't make a plan for my life to go in a certain direction, but I see with our, my students, I teach at the ICC, the International Culinary Center in New York, founded as the French Culinary Institute. As you know, and I also travel and teach, and I bring in interns to work with us, and hopefully they become our employees. So what I notice, the more varied background, the better employees because you want people that have interest in life, that they've, they've gone through experiences and actually everything in my past helps me with mm -hmm. the cakes including lifting them so <laughs> you can you know a lot of people because there's such great exposure for cake design in the past few years uh, send me letters saying my dream is to become a cake designer but you don't start even with the term cake designer you start by washing dishes mixing the cake batter learning how to bake and slowly you get to where you are yeah so I prefer people that had a lot of different experiences if you tell me that you were a good dishwasher that will be so good. exactly. Yeah. You need to be able to do something rather than have a title. And another thing is, in the school at the International Cul International Culinary Center, we address each other as chefs when we instruct, and the students are required to call us chefs. But that's a formal title in school. Mm -hmm. But in real life, you don't go to school and graduate and become a chef. Chef means a master. I don't call myself a chef. There are bigger people out there, so. Um, you know, a certain humility will not hurt in with what we do. And knowing, yeah, humility, and you find humility by knowing more of the world. And right. So go to the army first, then we we'll talk. I'm going to the army, guys. <laughs> um, do you have a sweet tooth? Mm, what do you think? I think you yeah, might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a gunner. <laughs> when it comes to desserts, I've always been uh, sort of a sugar addict and very hyper kid and sugar is my passion so here at work I can keep it under control because you know I taste what we do on a regular basis to make sure that the quality and the flavors are right but I already know the product the problem is I'm surrounded by all those temptations um, it's not so much a problem because I work out afterwards three times a week with a trainer, an hour and a half each time. <laughs> so one of those times I have a workout partner who is 20 years younger than me and is just retiring from an active ballet career. Oh, wow. So it's nice to work with somebody much younger who is where I was 20 years ago and to keep up. Yeah. So what's your favorite thing? Is it cakes to indulge in? Or is uh, it? My favorite thing are baked good, but especially baked goods, especially yeast raised doughs. So I always go to the ICC and I know where the class is and the bread kitchen, which is my favorite. I also took the bread course myself and that's the big thing. You oh. know, babkas and kugelhops and danishes, oh. all laminated dough. So I love cakes, but there's so much buttercream I can eat myself on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> The other problem, besides being close to the school, is I'm in this Bermuda Triangle of Dominique Cancel, Jacques Torres, and uh, Francois Payard on Houston Street. And now they open La Durée, but I prefer Made in America. So I, uh, I go there and, you know, of course I can have whatever I want. And they keep offering, and those guys are so generous. And they keep piling <laughs> on, you have to try this and this yeah, and that. Yeah, try all these new things. Right. So. Well. But then, you know, it's part of the joy of life. Tough, yeah, tough life. Exactly. It could be worse, right? <laughs> it could be so much worse. And you can imagine, you know, we should go out to a restaurant because then they bring out all the desserts and I have to try You everything. always get the full dessert Yeah, tray. I just have to. You know, I sacrifice. You have to. Yeah. It's your responsibility. Yeah. It's a hard life. <laughs> it's um, a hard life. It's rough, rough. Um, any savory indulgences? I cook all the time. I oh, love great. to cook at home. But... If it was my choice, if I was in a desert island, I just want to have a, 
a, a sugar plantation. Yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, Martha Stewart, you mentioned earlier when you were showing us around, and I know she's sort of a mentor, or at least a, a friend. She's been co-worker. great, yeah. Um, I sort of was discovered by her, amongst other things. Um, amongst other people, I was discovered by Martha Stewart. But the nice thing with her is that um, I got to learn a lot from her. She was the first one to bring me on TV, so I, she's a great improviser, and you just bring some recipes, and she immediately works with you. And what I found out, as long as I'm confident with what I do, yeah. she would follow my lead, which is a great compliment, yeah. right? So, and I heard that from other chefs. And also, she likes to share her sources and, and so forth. So it's been a long-term relationship. Of course, she has a great crew of editors and stylists to work with. I, I really enjoyed it, and it keeps on going. Yeah, so she has a good nice. sense of humor. I find it funny in a wry yeah. way, you yeah. know. Uh, one time we were working and she said to me, is that enough? And I said, no, keep on going. So she would keep on going, but I know it's a joke. I mean, it's, it's a sort of thing that she, she's, she would be funny for chefs. You know, we understand that sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know. But she's a, she's a busy bee. She has to work, and I totally identify with that. Yeah. You know, we're not satisfied. We really don't just like to go on vacations. We like to go and explore, and we like to make things. So I empathize with that. But I've met over the years so many uh, chefs and, and event planners and florists and architects that influence me in the event industry because I always deliver the cakes and try to discover what other vendors are doing. So the first First time I saw how they put up a tent for a wedding was so exciting, but I learned so much about draping from that. So it's never ending and I, I've coined for myself the term of inspiration because it's not so much about, yes, you want to learn techniques and you want to specialize and make them perfect, but keep the, your eyes open for inspiration and it's all over. So cake ideas don't necessarily come anymore. When I started and I told you when I went to school and we, we learned how to pipe lines, yeah. we learn dots, then we learn how to make ruffles in icing, we learn how to make basket weave, but then people would just order a basket weave cake, a polka dot cake. It did not make sense to me. Here people come in and we talk about the stationery. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there a monogram? Is there a certain kind of look? And then we it's not one cake that fall. There's no style A, B, or C. Yeah, choose so, one or two or three. Exactly. So the cakes are a manifestation of the celebrants. I like to prepare the cakes as a canvas. So most times they'll be very symmetrical and tall and neat, yeah. and then sort of break it with I movement. Like yeah, absolutely. Okay, so how do I phrase this? Chefs have a reputation of being tempestuous and kitchens can be kind of crazy and intense mm-hmm. and there can be things thrown and knives and and I feel like at least the reputation... Well, I think spatulas. <laughs> yeah. Um, hot pans. Um, I feel like pastry has a reputation of being more controlled and like scientific, but I mean, mm-hmm. what we saw was also completely art, you know, so I don't know, where does... Your view of pastry it's chefs true. fall. I, I, I think kitchens can be very wild, and I don't gravitate towards that. Yeah. Uh, I like to, to have control yeah. and, and to be able to practice. And the way I divided the work week is like that. We start very calmly because we have to recover from the weekend and deliveries and so forth. So the, uh, the easiest sense of laboratory, which I always admire in pastry. Uh, I have thrown cakes at people, but I missed. Uh, <laughs> you know, I... How much damage can it cake? I used to raise my voice much more when I was upset, but it's also a matter of experience and age. Yeah. You know, and I, you find better ways to achieve what I want to do. Um, but there's much less drama here. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. What's the craziest cake? Is there a single craziest cake you've ever been asked to create or have created? I think when I started, what was very crazy for me is, I don't know how it came about, but I know we were the first to do tilted cakes. I didn't like, there is a style where the cakes themselves are shaved to be off centered. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't me. I like the cakes to be really tall and neat, but then we tilt mm-hmm. each tier in unexpected ways. And that was crazy in the beginning, especially that the first cakes were not very stable. And we really, by a miracle, the cake goddess was watching for us. Yeah. But now this, the um, structure is very safe and sound, but it still looks like the cake is gonna topple over. Any minute, yeah. So, but you know, there's no longer a single cake that is crazy. There's all this project that accumulate one on top of the other. 
and each one leads to another. So when we were asked to do the 100th uh, birthday party for the or birthday cake for the Plaza Hotel, it was a huge project. And then Martha Stewart suggested to do a documentary about the whole process. I'll have to see that. But as extreme as the cake was, it was 12 feet tall, 8 feet wide. The video is on our website, weddingcakes.com. And I saw a picture, and I thought it was the Plaza. Right. So that project, as crazy and as worried as I was about it, it was built on the success of previous projects. So yes, I needed 17 people to help me, but I had everybody I've ever worked with to come and help. There were a lot of silicone moldings, but we already had done it on a smaller scale, so now it was just expanding it. So when the whole thing was over, it felt great, but I also knew it doesn't start. And only, nobody would have trusted me with this project unless I had something Done. to show. Yeah. Well, it feels like that systematic thing again, that it's not just something born out of chaos. Oh. Yeah. So it's just like ballet or theater. You first block yeah. the stage, then you warm up your voice, warm rehearse, up your body, yeah. rehearse, <laughs> and then you repeat it. And I have a ne another th interesting thing between performing arts and um, pastries. I like repetition. Mm -hmm. I like to rehearse. I like to do it. Yeah. But I also like opening nights, and I always of say that <laughs> each one of our cakes is a, its own opening night. You yeah. know, usually for a wedding or a celebration, anniversary, birthday, these are once in the lifetime events, and we get to shine. Then they get to eat the cake; it's perishable, and we go home. Absolutely. There's dancing. There's a whole party for it. There's music. There's yeah. lights, and there's good taste. Yes. Um, sweet genius. Oh, I'm sorry. Now it's called. What is it called? Let me say. Yo soy el dulce genio. Oh. I'm trying to get into Univision. It's <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> Seriously, I would love. I would learn Spanish. Absolutely. How has that? Has that changed anything for you day to day? It changed a lot. The TV show and being on TV, you know, season after season. We had three seasons, yeah. which was really nice. Um, it changed a lot, but in a way it changed nothing. Because I still work the same way. You know, there's no discounts here. You don't wake up in the morning and the cakes are done. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I still come to work and, and do everything that I need to do. Um, what changes the public's perce perception? Say, because yeah. I've been doing cakes for many years beforehand, but a lot of people, unless they were getting married or in, in, investigating or even searching, you know, with a website such as weddingcakes.com, it's easy to find me. But people found it because they were looking for a special cake for a particular event. Mm -hmm. But now I walk through an airport and people stop me for autographs. And I'm so shy. It's so difficult. You know, I just happen to have the, the postcards and the magic marker and I'm ready. Um, the, there's such power for TV, such exposure. And it's not so much in the New York area where people leave you alone. Mm -hmm. So I could shop at the... Uh, Albuquerque Airport. Somewhere. I don't know. Uh, no, but um, try anywhere else. You know, when you go to the farmer's market in Union Square, where I live, I would see Rachel, sh Rachel Ray shopping, and I would say hello, she would say hello, and we'd continue shopping because mm -hmm. we want to get the freshest tomatoes. Yeah. But nobody bothers her. Maybe some people would say, we like your work. But that's it. New Yorkers let you be. Yeah. And everybody's a star here. But when you travel, when I travel to other parts of the country or the world, then people come in. It's, I like it. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to say, what do you think about sort of chef celebrity? Because it's wonderful. I mean, for the industry I mean, and the Food Network has promoted us so much. Uh, I think it's a renewed appreciation to what we do. I, I, I'm all for it. I think it's wonderful. I benefit from it. Uh, but I draw the line. I don't want any reality show in my bakery. The bakery is about the work and about our customers, about our clients. So I don't let the cameras come in too much. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to be. Uh, we limit the exposure to industry sites like yours. Like yeah. Chef's Connection is about what we do. But I wouldn't want to have slinging, <laughs> slinging your, icing in each other. Your interns become a reality television show would be yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's about, I mean, we could have done a very serious show, but people would just fall asleep. There would be no drama. Yeah. I think that if they ever they wanted to do a show, a show here, but I refused. But I also believe that it will be the most boring show in the whole world because we don't scream here. There's no. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the icing doesn't go out of the... There are no mistakes. You know, everything is done. And if there is a mistake, we would fix it. Right. So where's the drama? You wouldn't scream and cry, and they would just try to make you do that. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I don't, we don't cry with cakes. <laughs> no, no crying in cakes. Making cakes is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, well... Making cakes is not for the faint of heart. And if you're going to cry, this is not the place to be. Would you ever cry at the end when you saw the... I cry in weddings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially since I'm single. Oh. So the time is... He's single, ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can still... Well, yeah, 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 we I like mean, the ladies, but... Yeah, but gentlemen. Wink, wink, wink gentlemen. <laughs> Just like to open it up. I'll feed you cake. <laughs> Every day. I come with cake. <laughs> he is the cake. <laughs> That's all my questions. Oh.